Good afternoon, everybody. This is Phil P. Francis McNichol, and I'm doing a quick gun review um, because lately, without much time, I have been uh, purchasing here and there, budgeting, and a lot of people might think, well, with a bad economy, there's no good deals out there. Um, first and foremost, I stopped ordering from online gun stores or from, I want to say, uh, Guns America, and there are stores listed on there where they list their product. You, you go there, you look at a gun you like, you call them up, you make a purchase over the phone. They send it to Virginia at the FFL of your choice, namely a pawn shop or a gun store, and you go there and then you pay the transfer fees. You do the background check, you get your gun. Those start to add up those extra fees and sometimes you're just skating by getting the average price for used guns and new gun. And I just, through the process, I got tired of doing it. So I went to one location in uh, Opal, Virginia. And it's well known. The place has been around since I've been alive. Um, and they have great deals. Uh, I'm, not, I'm giving a shout out to them without saying their name because I don't have the actual permission to. Um, however, they always have great deals in cheaper, inexpensive guns like I like. With variety, with some archaic value to it, with some unique history to it. If you're a gun enthusiast, yes, it's so much fun to go shooting. Put a little piece of metal 50 yards down, right where you want it, you know, target practicing, plinking, aiming. I get it. It's all fun like that, but I also love the curioso of guns. I like imagining each gun. I, I do believe each gun has a soul with its history to it. And so I'm not for the big high value freaking pricey stuff. I'm not for niche stuff. In particular, but I love all guns. Okay, my mea culpa is I love all guns and give me a cheap gun any day. If the price is right and very, very inexpensive, I would enjoy a one shot 22 short Derringer with those little swivel barrels that go sideways and you empty out the casing, put a new casing in, switch it back. I've said this before and that's how I, I, I love guns because they're just so unique. Each one, even coming off an assembly line, has its own soul. And I feel that. And I feel the the energy involved in it. The machinations in progress. The the miniature pieces working together to uh, build one soul. One main uh, gun, for lack of a better term, that has a purpose. Ultimately, it's a game of life and death. Okay, this isn't like uh, some social welfare class you take in college where you can walk away if you have some bad words with a client. Uh, the gun is there to protect you ultimately on one end and it's to have a lot of fun and history with it on the other. Plinking, okay, target practicing, seeing what the gun can do, hunting with it, okay, self-defense. Arming up your family, arming up your community, war to defend whole populations, so on and so forth. So it is a more serious game and hobby we all partake in. And in the back of my mind, I'm always thinking utilitarian. And what I mean by utilitarian, explaining this again, is one thing has five or more uses. Okay, One thing might have only two uses. But it was worth getting it, okay? One thing may have one use, and I scratch my head sometimes thinking everything in this world has more than one use. And so from a, a prepper's perspective, the philosophy with me is utilitarian. One gun, how many things can it do? I can plank with it, target practice. I can uh, shoot small game that is that are rodents. I can shoot uh, uh, smaller animals that are threats. I can uh, use it for self-defense. I can use it for my, my home, protecting my, my goods, uh, my family, my cherished items like family, especially sons, maybe girlfriend. 
uh, girlfriends, friends staying over, something happens in the community, I'm still protected within, I want to say, a short radius of 50 yards before I get to longer guns, before I get to assault weapons. Assault style weapons, I want to say you can use in a combat situation, not that they're assault weapons. I need to get away from that terminology. That's what many people say, and that's what I say when I'm thinking of the smaller carbines, shooting um, a pistol round, faster velocities with a slightly longer barrel, and you can maneuver it more because you got a lot of a magazine to deal with. And so you're there to defend, not offend, okay? And it's not an assault weapon. The person who uses a weapon for offensive means is the assailant, especially if it's not a wartime situation or a battle or anything like that. But we may be called to do that, protect our own community, our own house, our own family. And that's the ultimate why I love guns and know that they are needed and they are a worthwhile hobby. So enough of me ranting. I'm sitting there. I go to this. I have a gun on layaway I'll do a video about. And I'm very happy about that to come. And I put $200 on it. And I was thinking to myself, self? Go look into <coughs> the the used counter, okay? And this place I go to has three counters worth of used guns. And I go to the farthest one first. I'm going to make myself to the, to the uh, left and go down to the second one and then the third. But I'm looking at the first one and I see, wow, a G21, a Glock 21, 45, 45 ACP stood out of me. Because I diversify, 45 ACP I have a few of, 44 Magnum I have a, a lot less of, and 9 millimeter is a go-to battle round. Anything within, uh, I want to say, arms distance to 75 yards, maybe 100 yards with a good carbine. Maybe more, 150, 200 yards. Don't get me wrong. I don't do all those tests. I know what they can do based on experience. All right. You have a carbine with a 9 millimeter, with a longer barrel, 16-inch barrel. You have a 9 millimeter going out at much faster velocities than 1,110, which are the average. I'm sorry, I'm just throwing normal numbers there that I'm used to. 1,100, 1,200 feet per second. Okay? You have the higher velocity going out to 1,400 feet per second. You can reach out there and have a pretty safe perimeter. But you need to make sure you definitely know where your cover and concealment is. Or you got troubles, okay? The 9mm is not the biggest round in the world to take down large deer at 150, 200 yards. Can it do some damage? Yes, especially to uh, human personnel, lack of a better term. Anyways, I'm looking down. And sorry, my phone is going off at times. I'm looking down and I see this Glock 21 and that 45 ACP stood out. And I was like, it was calling my name. It was calling my name. And I looked at the price, $449. I wasn't intent and content to buy it. But I asked the gentleman, can I please see that? And he showed it to me. Brand new condition spanking brand new nice oil sheen everything smooth no holster wear uh everything in the lockup is perfect intense enough where you know that feeling it's a brand new glock and i said what else comes with this he said uh, oh it says here consignment extra magazines so i'm thinking to myself oh one extra magazine i don't know uh it, it's been a while since i bought a glock the the glock 41 last year and I don't remember it having three magazines. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. And so I said, I look at it and I said, I'll take it right now. And I put the money down on the layaway I have and I purchased brand new Glock 21. Brand spanking new that was left on consignment. They suggest to their um, friends they do business with who perhaps lost a loved one that was a gun collector they suggest lower prices so it does liqu liquidate. They do get the money. They're not worried about it sitting there on the shelf indefinitely because it's too high of a price. 
so they recommend lower prices. $449 for a brand new Glock. Brand new Glock, Gen 5, 21, 45, ACB. Brand spanking new. Serrations to the front, serrations to the back. Brand spanking new condition. I walked out of there with this for $475. You at most gun stores and pawn shops can put money down and make this layaway and not break your bank either. Okay. I just so happened to have a larger paycheck. There was some expendable money on the top. I figured, okay, if I owe anybody money, I'll extend it a little, pay the bills I have to, put money down on this, purchase it right away before someone else snags it up. There was also a Glock 30 in there, which is a compact 45 Glock. Glock 30, and it's a compact. And it's unloaded. You can see the uh, silver ramp there. A lot smaller than this, not much, maybe an inch of the barrel. Maybe the uh, grip in the, the receiver is a little smaller, but the Glock 30 is a nice pistol. And I have one of them, but I forgot which one it is. I think it's a Glock 36 that is similar, but 9 millimeter. I forget. I forget. I, I do inventory occasionally, and I know what's. I know where it is safe. Anyways, beautiful service pistol. 13 in the magazine. What up to Pike? That's 14 rounds of 45 ACP. It's a round, formidable, bigger round. Uh, when it hits you, it's hitting you like a screen door, where a uh, 9mm might be more puncture, fast through, maybe a little more, uh, I want to say, hydraulic pressure. And uh, what is it called? I forget the name of it. It's been a while. But the hydro shock value, not the not the or the round that we shot back in the 1990s on the force. Anyways, beautiful pistol. One, two, three, and when I go to uh, another uh, pawn shop this morning. See a very sturdy holster. I don't even know who makes theirs. There's no markings. <coughs> Excuse me. They have a bunch of these in, lined up, brand new, on the counter, loose like this. And I said, does that fit Glocks? $20. You order this. This might be 30 to 40 bucks on the cheap end. Very sturdy, hard interior. This does not bend all over the place like you would think. And I wanted something just quick, so if I decide to go on the range of practice with this exclusively, hopefully sooner than later, fits perfect. So, under $500, I have a brand new system, 45 ACP. And I can honestly say my house, my immediate surroundings anyways, are secure. And this will get me to the longer gun the longer game so to speak and there are still deals out there always look for consignment always expect you can haggle down some and ask them for a cheaper price sometimes they overcharge things in gun stores and pawn shops just because they want to make a killing they want to make 80 to 90% value that they lost in the original transaction. Okay. Someone comes in, they give them a gun for, let's say, $200. Okay. The $200 loan goes to the person that owns the gun. They take the gun. The gun is worth literally $800. Okay. <clears throat> if it's a, a collectible of some sort, it doesn't have to be high dollar. Instead of $800 market value, 
they'll jack it up to about $900 when that person uh, basically fails to pay off the loan. So they want literally 10 times their investment in that original loan. That's how insidious they are. And they wonder why our economy is so bad in certain respects, because everybody is trying to cut their throats now out there. That's not everybody. That's not every transaction. There's still plenty of great deals out there. If you wanted to get this for $449, $475 total after taxes and paperwork charges and everything, do layaway. Ask people if they can do layaway. If they cannot do layaway and work with uh, new, buyer, uh, new buyers, new gun owners especially, don't do business with them. I've walked into gun stores all over Northern Virginia, say, oh, that's really nice. I like that, but the price is kind of high. Can I do layaway? Can I put a down payment and I pay it off? And sometimes it has been, no, we don't do layaway. Oh, thank you. Have a nice day. Sometimes it's been, we do layaway, but you have to pay it off within 30 days. Huh. And I'm, my mind is thinking, can I do it? In three pay periods. This pay period, I am putting a payment down. The next pay period at the most is going to be two weeks away. And then the next pay period after that, another two weeks a day, two weeks away, being 30 days total. Uh, no, thank you. No, thank you. Not that I, I'm just rushing it to give you a lot of money. And that gun is overpriced. Okay. Even on layaway, it's overpriced. And I don't appreciate it. You know, thank you. It's nice to look at, but I don't think that's an appropriate price. If they say something to the effect of, well, what price are you looking at? Well, then be reasonable. If you have a, a $450 gun, ask low, like, well, not too low, but ask low. Okay, that 400 is still a chunk of change. What about 400 out the door? No other processing fee. Meaning, I give you 400 that's it. Okay? And then you watch their minds and their eyes going back and forth and them calculating that. And they say, okay, yeah, that's not a bad idea. That's not a bad idea. And then you just reply to them, I want to make sure you know $400 total. If they say $2 for a, pay, uh, for a paperwork fee, go with it. Okay, 400 uh and two and a half dollars. Okay. And make sure they know that. Then you got yourself a deal. You haggled them down. And probably they still profited on a $450 item. They probably got for less than $100. Or about $150 investment. They still got $250 on that weapon. Okay. So know the guns. Know the game. Okay, and know the guys, because you get in good with them, they'll know you're not bullshitting when you're honest about things, and they're not going to try to, uh, I want to say, finagle you or sell you a lemon car, which is a gun, um, in this case, or you know, tell you no lies just to just to clear the counters. Okay, when they have a lot of selection, they don't have to do that. When they have a lot of buyers coming in because of great deals, they don't need to do that. They'll mostly be honest and make sure you know what you're looking for, too, so you can sit there and make it the best deal for you. Clock 21, 45 ACP, getting hit with the screen door, 45 caliber, caliber uh, pistol bullet. If you think about that, 45 caliber was about the average of gunshot. I'm sorry. Shotguns and shot from uh, shotguns way back when. There was 32 balls. There was, I want to say, 30 caliber balls they would put in some uh, smaller guns. But if you look at shot that actually took down big game, you're looking at 50 caliber to the 40 caliber range. A 45 ACP has stopping power. You have a round that is going 800 to 950 feet per second. 950 feet per second is carbine, 45, um, 45 ACP coming out of something like a Tommy gun with a longer barrel. 
Okay. But 41 inch, uh, 41 inch, I'm sorry, 40, Glock 41, the longer barrel, I think it's five inches, or the Glock 21, which is four and a quarter, I believe. Okay. It's a duty service pistol. It's not, <coughs> excuse me, it's not there to be a small pistol you just put in your pocket. It's there to show that you mean business, okay? You see someone with a, a service pistol, this caliber, and I wanna say this uh, of high esteem, improving, battle tested, get it for 50, I'm sorry, 449, 475 out, out the door. Virginia, New Virginia taxes are hitting us. And I don't know how that was possible, uh, getting like uh, literally $25 more than the actual list price. I don't know how that transpired, but I just took the guy for his word because it was still within $500. Most Glocks brand new are 550 and up. This is brand new quality, brand new, never shot. They couldn't tell me the history of it other than it's brand new quality. And I'm like, oh my God, it is, yes. So, the video I did before while I bloviate, excuse me, on my desk of, uh, my desk of solace, I want to call it, with all my stuff and my writing, okay? On a previous video, I talked about this, this uh, little holster and how it's cheap as hell. If you can look right there, it's tearing, okay? It's supposed to be flat down like that. So it's like that, it's supposed to be flat and not tearing like that, okay? This is a holster for a piece I bought from Temu, and it's basically an eating field kit, okay, without the pan or without the cup, okay? And I remember I said, or I tried to intimate, I liked it. The product was good. The accessory sucked. It came in this, so I can't carry this. I have to put this in my my carry um, grocery bags where I put in a whole bunch of food for a long 16-hour shift so I'm not running to get fast food constantly. I'm changing that all up now because I don't like the weight I've gained from just fast food alone and not sleeping well. So in here, this is supposed to put on your be put on your belt. You can't do this because of the cheap, cheesy stitches, okay? It didn't come completely off yet, but it, it's about to. If the weight is here and I, I walk by something and hit it, this comes off, you lose it. If you're in a high stress, very busy job like I am, then you don't want anything like that. You don't want a product like that. I can't put this big clunky thing in my pants pockets because of all my other loadout stuff I need more immediately. Okay? I've showed before a very durable box cutter that is attached to a lanyard, a 550 cord, and a carabiner, and that's all I can go with. This is a second knife, okay, with my loadout of tweezers, uh, toenail clippers, um, shoelaces that are very sturdy for tourniquets, rubber bands, um, tweezers, and what have you for little stuff that I, I need almost every day for one reason or another on 16-hour shifts that may turn into 24 hours, okay? I like this, but this is something I stow away in my car and I have to go back out to my car, pull it back out, use it because I don't want to do dishes in somebody's house, okay, and make extra work for the guys that are there supposed to do their dishes and clean up after themselves, okay? Whole nother story. But at work, I want my own utensils sometimes, okay? So I wanted to do a review on this, and it, it's very simple. That fork goes into that, that slot right there. This spoon goes into that slot right there, okay? So what you do is you pull it out and pull it up, and then you use it, okay? I think their intention was with that, what is that, uh, hexagon, hexagonal hole there. It's supposed to go back in and then it's extended so you eat like this. You eat like that. I'll show you in a second. 
And I, I've used the fork a few times, and I just used the fork plain because I couldn't figure it out, and I don't think it really, it really stayed. So it comes out of the slot, fork, that hexagonal hole, corkscrew. Okay, this is hard plastic. It's fairly sturdy, but I wouldn't drive a car over it. You'd flatten the tire, and this thing would break. Okay. Corkscrew, and the knife part, it has a finger groove here. Reach in, pull the knife out, just like any Swiss Army knife. And that's pretty cool. You know, so you have your knife, and that's all. It's very simple to use. It will help out in a pinch. It's not trying to be something it's not. That's why I liked it. Except for this. Okay. If I'm not carrying a box cutter knife that I need to cut open boxes all day long and cut down things to minimize trash, then Lord help me. I have, I'll carry this in a pants pocket, sit on it, and I have to adjust my ass because it hurts. I land in my butt bone on it. Okay. Or I got to put it in my front pants pocket with cans of dip, uh, maybe a pocket pistol. That's not going to happen. I have to put this in my front pants pocket. I'm not going to have a, a pocket pistol. And I have to put it over here with my cans of dip on the left side. So it's like great concept, sucky fringe benefit. I don't remember the cost. It was like 20 something maybe. Look on Timu. They have all kinds of pocket knife deals that are like Swiss Army pocket knives. And I don't know where they're necessarily made, but they're fairly decent. They're fairly decent. This, when I go camping, if I was uh, roughing it on my own and I started a fire, I'm eating. I'm using this. I'm rinsing it off with some water or some snow, or maybe I just have to dry it off, okay, and then rinse it later when I'm on the go. It gets some things done, okay? Folds right back in. Let's see if with that, ox, I want to say hexagonal hole, what transpires. Okay. Okay, there's another something with a push button. Okay, sorry. On the opposite uh, spine of this knife, it has another bottle kit cap opener and this is not sharp this is dull on purpose but this can puncture into things like a can you're opening glad I saw that okay what is this is that anything I use this only for the fork so I haven't opened it up all the way there's something right here too Did it come up? Or is that part of the spine? That might be part of the, the uh, spine. Okay, it does come up. You can see here, this metal part here comes up some. Pushing down this way. More to be revealed, I'm assuming. It has already paid for itself in its use. And saving me a lot of time and energy going to clean extra dishes and whatnot. And the place is already clean, ready for inspection. That's what I'm getting at. So, can you put this in and will it lock somewhere? It will end right there. Okay, it goes back in the slot. But this is loose. So you can't really eat like this without it falling out. That's what I remember uh, the first time I used a fork I had troubles with. Trying it different ways. This, okay, reversed it. This works, this is not moving. So it does, you just have to figure out which way it goes in. See if it can go in this way. Okay, there is a, a lip in there I can feel when you push it all the way in. Interesting, okay. I was trying, always pushing it this end instead of that end. 
to the close in where the, the slide is and the ramp where they go in, from the top, go on the bottom part, put it in. Let's now let's see with the fork. It goes like that, okay? You basically just reverse it. Now, holding the same thing, pull it out to put it back in. This fork is, let's say, clean. Put it in facing inward down that same slot. And you'll see this ridge around here that holds it in place. Interesting. So basically, pull this off, put it in the opposite way towards the ass end, and that's the handle. Pretty interesting stuff. I've used it just like this. Had no problem with it. It's a fork. It's not the hugest fork in the world, so you might need to get used to it. The spoon is not a big spoon, so serves its purpose. Putting it back away where the top of the body is. That's for the head of everything. Put it in this slot here, okay? And it goes right under this head here and fits right into it, okay? So then you pull up and out. You want to release it. Put this in here. You see the slides? That slot up and down here. Put the fork in like that. Make sure you push it down. It's inside the ridge here. And it carries like that. Very simple. And I love this thing. I don't love the holster. Why, why do they make a good system, but they have a terrible way to deliver it? It's like... Guys, come on. You look, you look at armies all around the world to make a product because you have near slave labor in the country you make it. And yes, we're buying it, okay, but we are also buying products that are raising, supposed to be raising the quality of life all over the world. That's the whole idea of globalism that I don't believe in at all. But, uh, you know, we buy a product that is less expensive we can make this very inexpensive too here in the United States if we have manufacturing and no regulation. You know, I can go off on a tangent about that. We can make something this inexpensive and durable with a better sheath. The sheath doesn't have to cost that much more money. How about double stitching it? Jesus fucking Christ. This is normal everyday nylon, okay, that you see on pouches everywhere. You stitch it one time there and it tears off. I can no longer carry this unless I'm putting it in a bag somewhere and situationally I can use it. I want to use this all the time. or have it on my person so I know what I have on my body and what I can get away with when I'm hungry and I don't want to play around. I want to eat and I want something clean that's easy to use. Okay? Love this, and I've said that before. It's a pretty good product, except for the holster and the delivery system to provide me the use of that product. So, 20 so bucks or so, I think it was 18. It was 18 and change, and it came to 20. Look them up. They got all kinds of neat deals. I buy sometimes 10 of them if they're really inexpensive because I know it's cheap stuff, but I know in the future children that grow up that have a need for it okay if we can't buy that stuff and almost everything is outlawed which is not going to happen in my lifetime because i'm not going to let it happen leave my virginia virginia alone i don't new york my virginia all you freaking northern virginia uh rich motherfuckers and dumbasses from other countries that think you're living the high life please keep your your freaking politics back at your old country you know, Northern Virginia is accessible because of the illegal immigrants and the pro-American immigrants. And in there, you have a, a, in between a lot of liberalism. I think everything is hunky-dory until they leave and go out into the rural areas. And if they were left alone and somebody actually robbed them out there, they'd be like, Whoa. they think that lifestyle is celebrity this, fluff this, fluff that. Everything is... I want to say euphoric to them and they don't think about the common sense things, the hard work, the understanding, you have a skill, 
uh, not just doing some data entry job or some uh, kiosk job you're sitting down for eight hours a day because it's Tyson's Corner, because it's McLean, Virginia, because it's Fairfax, you know, build me one of these and tell me how you think afterwards. You have a certain amount of pride, but you do want to get a good price in return for this and you want it to be out in the market and you want it to succeed. You know, you can't do that in this America. You can only do service oriented work. I digress, but that's what globalism does. Gut America while it takes all our money and sends it to other countries. Well, if those other countries are supposed to be conservative in nature, right? Christian in nature, right? Friends, right? Even if they're Muslim, even if they're Jewish, they're supposed to be friends, right? They're not. They're Chinese communists that are also ideologically sound with the globalists to oppress and eliminate most of um, uh, of humanity and all of America because we are l the last bastion of freedom where it's codified. Okay, we can still defend ourselves and have that to back up on a back up us in the future. Can't do that in Zimbabwe. The law protects me, so I had to kill this guy that came at me with a machete. Good luck with that. You'll probably spend 35 to 40 years in jail there before you end up dying. Unless the State Department comes and gets you because you know Joe Biden and Hunter Biden. Anyways, I digress. So the deals are out there. Little neat stuff might help you in your preps. You know, do I live and die by this? No, I, I lost it one time in my car and I was like, oh, well, I waited another two weeks to clean out my car and found it. Cleaned it all some, I was happy again. I used it about three or four more times after that. Brand new Glock, three magazines of 13 each, 45 ACP, formidable round, 800 to 950 rounds per second, uh, feet per second, I'm sorry, coming and hitting a target is like a screen door hitting you and knocking you flat out. It's going to do damage. It's going to harm the the offender. It's going to stop them. Nine times out of ten. Let's hope everything doesn't get that far. These deals are out there, and I look forward to shooting this a lot. Okay? Shooting it, plinking it, mostly. Would I have any, any problem whatsoever handing this out to my older sons in the future saying, here you go. Make sure the house is safe. I'm going to do A, B, and C to make sure we have food. Protect the house and protect your little brothers and sisters. No, I'd have no trouble at that whatsoever. $449. It was $475 out the door and waited for a background check and I got it as soon as I saw, almost as soon as I saw it. There's still mechanisms there's still gun deals out there and things you can defend yourself with. I do. Who remembers this one? You know, NAA 22 Magnum. You know, you can still protect yourself with it. Would it be the best to protect yourself with it? Maybe not. There are better choices, of course. What can you do to feel comfortable living your life free. That's what you have to think about, you know. Then train to the standard of this gun. You are not going to sit there and try to have an all-out street battle with somebody when they got a, a semi-automatic pistol and they're throwing rounds down at you from, you know, 100 feet away. And you're like, holy shit, what are you going to do? Get behind cover and concealment. Make yourself scarce. Get out of the area. Don't try to fight someone with this. This is more up close. Get off. Back off me. I am not getting robbed today. And you click this on the end. I'm not going to click it here. You click this, and that gets their attention some. 22 Magnum is a lot different than a 22 uh, long rifle, but they are still a weapon to defend yourself. You use it. You get out of Dodge. You don't sit there and placate people. And well, da, da, da. I'm going to hold you at gunpoint while they still can get a knife to you or a gun at you. Philosophies. I digress. 
Thank you guys, and I appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed uh, the eye candy. Brand new Glock 21 Gen 5. I don't know. Is there a Gen 6 now? I haven't researched gun, guns in nearly a month and a half. Just a beautiful gun. And this going, I have one of these extra. A Glock 41 with a longer slide. And these two last uh, Glocks, I look forward to testing. And I love the 45 uh, round. You know, some people will be re recoil sensitive. But the 45, when you get used to it, to me, it's an undulating kind of action and it's a little more than a nine millimeter but it's not unwieldy unwieldy it's not like a 44 magnum or a 44 special even it works so diversify thank you guys look out there and defend yourself protect yourself protect your family protect your community protect your state and protect your god great united states it's worth protecting in spite of biden let's go brandon